Okay, so today we will start a new topic. How do you identify the customer needs for a product? So in the last few classes, we tried to understand the opportunity for the design of a new product. And we found that uh, if you have an intention to develop something, we'll uh, ask some technical questions and then try to get a mission statement or prepare a mission statement. And that actually shows that you have an intention to develop a new product. So whenever you want to develop a new product, you need to find out what the customers are looking for in that product. And once you know the customer's needs, then only you can actually develop it and then sell it to the customer. So the requirement here is to know what the customers are looking for in this new product. And how do we actually identify these customer needs? And uh, from the customer needs, how do we actually identify the actual needs that can be incorporated in the product? So that is going to be the discussion in the next few classes. So what we do, we'll go with the product, uh, the customer need analysis, and then we'll see how these needs can be converted to design specifications or we call it as the product specifications. So the needs cannot be directly put as a design specification because customer will say easy to use. So when you say easy to use is a customer need, how do we make that as a design specification? How do you bring those requirements of the customer which will make the product easy to use into the design specification or what are the things to be done in the product to make it easy to use. So that is basically known as converting the customer needs to the specifications of the product. So these customer needs will be mostly a subjective uh, thing because this will be going to be subjective. That is, it will vary from person to person. So somebody will say it should look good. Somebody will say it should be easy to use. Somebody will say it should be lightweight. Each one will be having lightweight. So what do you mean by lightweight? Depends on individual. So for me, 100 gram may be lightweight. For somebody, 1 kg may be lightweight. So how do we actually quantify them and then make it more objective is basically the product specification. So we try to convert the subjective needs of the customer to objective design requirements in the product specification. So in the next uh, few classes, we will try to see how do we identify the customer needs first and then how do we convert these needs into design specification. So that is going to be the discussion that we are going to have in the next few classes. Okay, so we will uh, look into a few things here. I will come to this a little bit later. Uh, we will look at how do we actually define the customer satisfaction? Okay, how do we say that the customer will be satisfied with the product? Or what are the ways in which we can make sure that the customer will be satisfied? And then we look at how to gather the customer needs. And then how do we prioritize the customer needs? And what are the other things to get the needs, etc. And that later we'll go for the specific. So the first part will be looking at the customer needs to satisfy the customer. So what we are uh, trying to do is here we have a mission statement and business case study already have a business case and now we have a gate. So this was the stage. Now you have a gate. Assume that you have passed the gate saying that yes, there is a good scope for development of a new products. The mission is very clear. Your uh, profits, uh, market, everything is understood. I mean to some extent you know and therefore we go to the next stage of customer need analysis. So from the understanding the, the vision for the product, then we go to the customer need analysis, which will provide you a, a prioritized customer need list, which is the most important need, which is the least important need also we will be able to identify. So this is known as the, uh, this is the prioritized customer need list. So we are going to see how can we prepare a customer need list. In the first part we will look at how do we prepare a customer need list and then we go for converting these needs into specifications. Okay. So the product design actually uh, happens in two modes. This one will be discussed in one of the classes. One is that the customer asks for something saying that, hey, I have a problem with this product or there is no product to meet some of my requirements. Can I have a product like this? That is basically you start from the customers and then 
design a product. The other one is the technologist will know what is possible to be developed and then you develop it and then give it to the customer, then customer will accept it. So, these are the two problems. So, this uh, companies like Sony or electronic companies, they normally do not go and ask people oh, what do you want, do you need a particular kind of a product. They will know what is what they are capable of. So, somebody will ask for okay, I need a, a flexible display phone. Nobody will ask for a flexible display phone because they do not know that it is possible. But the company which actually manufactures display, they, are, they know yes, it is possible to have flexible displays, foldable displays. Therefore, they come up with a product with a flexible display or a foldable display and then give it to the customer. Customer will be very happy to accept it because they can actually fold it and keep it in the pocket. So, that is known as the a technologist problem. So, basically the technologist will know what is possible, they try to develop and of course, they will try to understand the customer needs even in that case also, but it is not initiated by the customer or the market. It is initiated by the company knowing their technical capabilities or technological uh, know-how, they try to develop products. So, this is basically known as a, a technologist problem. So, this technologist problem is basically starting with the technology, you develop a product and you sell it in the market. But customer desire based on the uh, desires of the customer, you develop product that is the second mode of product development. Most of the time, people are using a particular product, they are actually not happy with the product they find that it is very difficult to use, then they need a product and that is the gap that a designer will try to fill by modifying the product or coming with a new product. So that is basically the customer design based on the customer designs. So, these are the two modes normally done in product development. We do not really work, work uh, focus on this part because that actually depends on the technology and uh, the company, but we look at how do we actually start from the customer designs and then design new product. So, that is the second way of designing new products. Okay, so let us look at uh, the uh, customer desires and then see how can we satisfy the customer. Any product you buy, you will be having some basic expectations of the product, right? When you buy a phone, you have a basic ex expectation what it should do. And if all those things are satisfied, you will be happy with the product. Yes or no? When will you feel really upset with a product? You buy a product and then you feel very much upset with the product. When will you have that kind of a feeling? Pardon? Yeah. So, when the product is not meeting the basic expectations that you have, then you feel that disgusted feeling, right? Oh, what a mess, why did I buy this product, it is a total mess, I never liked this, I, do, I should not have bought this condition, that, this product. So, that is the second one. The first one is you are happy, you are satisfied. The, the second one is, the first one is you are happy with the product. The second one is you are completely unhappy, completely disgusted with the products. Can there be a third category? So, one is that you are happy, other one is you are completely unhappy. Okay, yeah. There can be some, uh, is, was there any opportunity you buy, bought a product, you had some expectation, but then when you bought that, you found that it is much more than what you expected. Was there any situation like that? Any product? What was the product? Mobile phone. Okay. So, you expected something it will do and then you found that it can do much more than what you expected. So, what was your feeling? Happy. Yeah. You have something to say? Yep. Laptop. Oh, yeah. So, when you buy a laptop, you have some basic expectations, but then when you bought it, and you started using, you found that it has got more features or more functionalities than you have, you expected. Okay. So, you can actually call this as the third category of customer satisfaction. So, the first one is happy. Okay. Second one is disgust or completely unhappy. Then the third one is, you can say 
delighted okay so any product will be having these three i mean you can have these three kinds of satisfaction in a product that is the product you buy meets the basic expectation that you have that is this curve okay so you expected this many features and it is fully implemented you are happy you expected more it is there you are happy if it is not there you are unhappy so it is known as the expected performance curve of a normal product that is the customers are expecting this many features you provide those features in a good way then customers will be happy with the product so that is known as the expected performance curve that is customer will be happy if you if you provide all those what you expected because when you buy a 2000 rupees camera i mean 2000 rupees phone you have basic expectation and you satisfy that you buy a 15000 rupees camera you have some expectation and all those are met then you will be having a, a basic expectation curve so this axis represents the functions implemented in the product and it is not there then you will be having a <coughs> It is not that you will be unhappy with the product. So that is basically this one, where these functions are absent, and you are actually feeling very much disgusted with these products. And this one is you still don't meet the the customer satisfaction. So this is the disgusted performance curve. That is, even if you provide the function, people are not happy because that is not up to their expectation of the the satisfaction that they are expecting. And the third one is the delighted performance curve. That is, customers are expecting something, but you are giving more than that expected. And they expected something and that is absent, but still they are happy because you have so many other features which compensate that one. So at any point of time, even if you don't provide all the features the customers are expecting, still people will feel very happy with the product because all other features are there that you provided much more than what the customer asked for it. So this is known as the delighted performance curve for a product. And the manufacturer or the designer of consumer products will always try to be in this curve or they, they need to be in this curve so that you can actually keep the market intact for nobody will actually capture their market. Because people will be happy with the product, they will be going for that product more and more because that product gives you much more features and functionalities that you, that the customer did not really expect but you try to provide it. And even if one or two are not there, you will still feel happy with the product. So you can actually have three curves and this is known as the Kano diagram of customer satisfaction. You can have a disgusted performance curve. Even if you provide all the functionalities, people won't be happy with the products because it is not meeting their real expectations. And something which is the basic expected performance curve, and this is the delighted performance curve. So, if you design a product, what will be your uh, goal? What which curve you would want to be there? Naturally, right? Because you want to be there there the delighted performance curve so that people will be happy to buy your products even if there is there are few features not there still people will be happy why we need to do this because people will be having lot of expectations i will be having some expectation another person will be some expectation it is difficult to provide all those things in the same product so even if some of the things are not there i still feel happy because there are many other things which i did not ask for so that is known as the delighted performance curve so the the purpose of looking at the customer requirement is to see how can you delight the customer it's not just satisfy the customer how can you delight the customer and if you want to know if you want to delight the customer you need to know what the customers are looking for in the product what are the things they are expecting in the product and that will come only from the customer so you need to go to the customer ask what they want and then find out what are the things they are looking for and then what are the things you can provide and how do you delight the customer. So the purpose of looking for customer needs is to basically ensure that you will provide all the features in the product to delight the customer. Okay, so what, what are the customer needs that you can have?
So the customer needs can actually be classified into five categories. So these are the five categories of customer needs. Okay, the first one known as the direct needs of a customer. Direct needs of a customer, if you ask a customer, he will tell, yes, I need a 12 megapixel camera, I should be able to play video in my uh, phone, I should be able to send messages, I should be able to connect to internet, Wi-Fi, all those things they will be able to tell very clearly. So, such needs are known as direct needs of the customer. Which are, which are very easy to identify. Just, just ask them, they will tell you what are the needs. So probably they may not tell you in the way design, designers need the information, but they are very clear about what they need. This is known as the direct need of a customer. So if I ask you, what are the direct needs of a laptop? All of you will be able to tell, right? What you are expecting from a laptop, all of you will be able to tell. Yeah, compact, it should be compact, it should be easy to carry, it should be have enough storage, it should have enough uh, speed of processing, it should have a particular processor. You are very clear about what you want, right? So, all those needs are known as direct needs which can be easily identified. But there are many needs in a product which you cannot directly identify and they are known as the latent needs of a product. Many times, customer won't be able to tell these latent needs. Only a designer can only understand the latent needs. So, when you ask for a mobile phone, do you ask for the charger specification? When you ask for a mobile phone or you buy a mobile phone or you ask for needs of a mobile phone, do you specify what should be the charger's capacity, charger type, etc.? You don't tell. You don't tell, right? Because you expect that you'll be already there. You don't need to specify. But then, if you buy a camera, uh, sorry, a mobile phone in India, and you might buy it in a, in a European country, what will be the difference? The charger will be different, right? Because we use 230 volts, 50 hertz uh, power supply, and our charger should be supposed to meet those that requirement. But when you buy this in Europe, they have a different uh, voltage level, different uh, frequency and a different uh, plug configuration also, the socket configuration also different. So, all those things a customer won't be able to tell, the customer is not worried about those things. So, he expects that it should be there. So, these kind of needs are known as latent needs, which says that the needs to satisfy the system in which the product operates. It's only, a, this uh, charge is only one example, but there may be many other examples about temperature, humidity, uh, condition, temperature variations, humidity. Uh, rain and all those things are there which will be not known to the customer or the customer won't be able to identify it as a need but a designer need to know what is the need for that particular product in a particular operating environment so that that such needs are known as latent needs of a product got it what is latent needs yeah so latent need won't be able to directly tell the customer won't be able to directly tell it a designer needs to identify it from other sources. Then other needs are basically known as constant needs. Constant needs are something which will be always there. Anytime you take any product you take, there will be something which is constant. For example, if you uh, talk about a mobile phone, 10 years ago, people say good picture quality. Now also people will say a good picture quality. But that good has changed because it's continuously changing. So it will be constantly there people will be always looking for a particular thing in a particular uh, product. So, such needs are known as constant needs. So, old cameras where you had the film, so there we used to have 36 film roll, 36 roll with 36 film. You will be always asking for, okay, I want more picture uh, rolls, more uh, pictures in that one. And even if you provide 64, they will say, oh, I need more. That kind of a thing. Now, your speed of a computer, your RAM, you will say, oh, I need a, a 16 GB RAM. You will say, oh no, if you provide 16, then I need more 32 GB RAM. So, this will keep on increasing, keep on changing, and keep on always be there. Such needs are known as constant needs of a product. Anytime, it will be always there, it will be constant, it won't change in the uh, future also. And some other needs are known as variable needs. 
that actually changes with the products. So, some cases it may be there and the product changes that need may completely vanish. For example, if you had something like a CD drive in all the laptop, all the computers, your laptop had a CD drive, desktop had CD drive, but nowadays nobody asks for a CD drive and most of them will go be happy with the USB drive. So, these are the needs which changes with the changing technology. So, you need to know in when you develop a product, you need to know which need is going to be changing in the near future and then accordingly you have to provide a feature so that your product can be updated at a later stage. So, such needs are known as variable needs of a product. And the last one is known as the niche needs. Niche needs are very specific to specific products, not applicable to all the products. When you have a particular product to be operated in a particular environment, then only that need comes, otherwise there is no need for that kind of a feature. For example, somebody is manufacturing refrigerators. So, in normal refrigerators, we know all will be having a specific requirement, specific needs like you no know, operating temperature should be from uh, 0 to 25 degree or something like that. But there may be a, a chemical lab or a research lab, they say no, my refrigerator should work from minus 50 degree to 20 degree. So, that is very specific to that particular product or a particular application. Such needs are known as niche needs of a product and this is applicable to power steering, uh, ABS, etc. Because when you apply power steering for a particular type of vehicle, there may be a particular requirement. Uh, similarly, a uh, uh, ABS, anti-lock braking system, you try to apply in a commercial uh, uh, vehicle compared to a uh, Light, light vehicle or a heavy vehicle, you will see that there are some differences which is very specific to that particular vehicle. Some th suppose you have a, a 12 wheel vehicle with very lo long vehicle or a very unsized vehicle, its ABS may be different from the normal ABS and very specific to that particular vehicle you can identify some needs. So, such needs are known as niche needs of a product. So, you can see any product development, it is important to understand all these needs to satisfy the customer because if you are not taking care of some of these needs then you are actually not satisfying the, those customer segments and people may not be happy with the product. Not necessary that you satisfy everyone but at least you should know what people are looking for or every, every one is looking for then you can decide which one is more important which one is less important accordingly you provide the product. So, these are the customer needs that you need to identify for a new product development. So, I explained all these things, I am not going to again. So, this, uh, so the first category considers the observability, that is the direct needs come from the observability of an individual. So, you can observe and then say, oh, these are the needs. When I say a particular product I want to, want, want to have, I can clearly tell, oh, these are the things I, can, I need because that's, that is easily understood from observing the things. The second considers the the technology change and the other category comes from the variance in the customer needs space because there are lot of people I mean, there are lot of variations in the customer segments and that actually comes from this one because as the customer segment varies you will be having constant needs and variable needs change. So, you can cut sorry this, this one the niche needs this is the second one which coming from the variance in the uh, technology because constant needs and uh, variable needs. So, in a customer, in a product development exercise, to identify and understand the customers, you need to look at all these needs and then see how do you identify the needs and that is the first stage in product specification development. That is, you identify the customer requirements and then convert these requirements into objective design specifications. Got it? The four types of needs. The first uh, two are important, then the, the, the direct need and latent need are the most important part here because they are the most important one which affects the observability of the product. The other one actually decides more on the designers to understand the technology changes and etc. So, the question is now, what are the ways in which you can identify the direct needs and latent needs of a product? How do we identify this in a systematic way? I can actually simply ask few people and then get it or I can have a very systematic way of identifying the customer needs.
So, this is what we are going to discuss what are the ways in which we can identify the customer needs. So, there are few steps involved in this one in identifying the customer needs. The first part is known as gather the raw data from the customers and customer data can I mean customer needs can come only from the customer. You cannot sit in a room and then interpret or predict what would be the requirement of the customer. So, you need to collect the raw data from the customer by going to the customer and asking the customer what actually you are looking for in this product. Yeah. So, that is known as the raw data collection. So, the raw data will be in a very raw form. Customer will say, oh, this is too heavy. So, you ask him, he will say it is too heavy. That is his uh, requirement or he will say difficult to carry. So, these are the things customer will say and then it is your job as a designer to see and uh, to interpret this data and then say what is the actual need the customer is talking about. When he says it is difficult to carry, you need to find out is it because of the size, is it because of the weight or is it because of its appearance, what is that makes him feel uncomfortable in carrying the product. So, that is basically known as interpreting the raw data in terms of customer needs. So, you have to interpret what the customer is talking and then write down what is the actual need he is talking about. And when you talk to 100 people, each one will give you 20 needs. So, you have 2000 needs now. What will you do with all these 2000 needs? Because raw data, when you have many people, lot of data will be generated. You convert all these data into customer needs. And then what you need to do is to organize the needs into a hierarchy of primary, secondary and tertiary needs. So, what is the most important needs? What is the secondary need of the customer? What is the third tertiary need of the customer? This one you need to organize well and then establish the relative importance of each need, which is the topmost need that should be satisfied. So, you have to rank them 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. and then say that this is the needs that should be satisfied in a product at least you should identify around the 10 products, 10 needs that customer is looking for or customer is interested in and then reflect on the results and then see whether what you have understood is correct or not. This is the process for identifying the customer needs. So, you are trying to identify the customer needs first by collecting the raw data from the customer and then interpreting the raw data in terms of customer needs. Then third, organizing the needs into a hierarchy and then deciding which was the most important requirements. And this is what you need to do as a designer in order to design a new product, in order to develop a new product. Any questions? You are able to follow? Yes or no? Okay. Please uh, stop me in case you have any questions or you feel that okay something needs more explanation. All right. So, let us move to the uh, method by which we do the collection. Okay. So, as I told you gathering the customer needs the first one is basically getting the raw data. So, raw data can be collected by either through interviews you go and interview the customers and that is known as the, the first method of collecting the customer data from customers. The, the requirements of the customer can be obtained from interviews or you can prepare a questionnaire, send it to many customers, ask them to answer this and then give it to you. That is the second one known as the questionnaires. The third one is known as the focus groups. That is you call some particular group of people to a meeting, talk to them ask them questions and then collect the data that is known as the focus groups. And the last one is known as the be the customer. You imagine yourself as a customer and then try to answer the questions. Okay, if I am a customer for this product, what will be my requirements? What are the needs I will be having in this product? That is basically known as be the customer. So, you can use, go for any of these methods to collect the data, but the most information per quantity you will be getting from interviews. You can interview the people, ask questions, record the information and then 
look at what is that they are looking for in this product. This is known as the interview method of data collection. So, we will be seeing looking at okay, how do we do this interview method of data collection. We will not be looking at the other methods because this is the most efficient way of doing it. Let me skip this and one of the methods for interview is known as like dislike method of interviewing. You go to a person and have a particular format which we call just like dislike method of data collection and ask these questions and try to find out what are the customer requirements you will be having. If you ask directly why, what you need in this product, they won't be able to tell you clearly. But if you be more specific or clearly ask questions and they will be able to tell what kind of needs they have. So, this method like dislike method help you to identify the customer preferences, customer requirements in a direct way by asking questions. So, we will see how to do this method of like dislike method. Okay, let me skip this. So, this method is uh, a simple one. So, what you will be having? You will be having a, a paper with few questions in the, this one. Okay. That is, you will be asking the customer some questions and try to ask this, the answer from him and say, okay, so this will be the questions you will be having and this will be the response of the customer and this will be the interpretation of the designer or you. The question will be, what are the typical uses of this product or typically what purpose you use this product? That is known as the typical use, typical use of the product. For example, if you take, uh, uh, if, you, if you are interested in buying a this product I can take for example. Okay, let us take a, a cycle. What are the typical use you have for your cycle? This is a simple question, right? You will say, oh, I use it to go uh, from hostel to class and come back. And I, is that the only one you are doing? No, sometimes I use it for roaming. Sometimes I use it for carrying things from shop, right? Sometimes I use it for carrying my friends. Okay, whether boyfriend or girlfriend, I will be taking. Uh, my friends for a ride. So, these are the different uses for cycle. So, each use clearly tells that there is a particular need for that. When you say that you are using it only for going from class to hostel, then you do not need to have a, a second seat in the cycle, right? Or you do not need to have a carrier in the cycle. But when you are trying to take this for carrying things, then the question comes, okay, what will be the weight of the person you are carrying? Okay. Is it a heavy or it's a light person? So these are the questions that will be coming. So typical use of the product becomes important because that actually tells you what are the basic requirements that you will be having in that particular use or particular customer needs. Then you ask, okay, are you using a cycle now? Yes, I am using a cycle. So what do you like in that product? What are the things you like about this particular cycle? Okay, you have a product. What are the product it is? You ask. What are the things you like? So he will say, oh, it is looking very good. Okay. And it is very robust. I mean, it, I don't need to do servicing. I can carry weight. Any number of uh, people can actually, two, three people can be easily, uh, I can take two, three people. And the pedaling is very easy. So you will be getting a lot of an answers for this from the customer. So that tells you, if you provide these kind of features, customers will be happy. That is the need of the customer. Then you ask, what do you dislike? What do you dislike in the products? So, what do you dislike in your products in the cycle? What do you dislike? Okay, sometimes the chain comes out, right? And you have to put continuous efforts and you have to clean it oil it frequently. So, these are the dislikes he will be telling. Then you ask, you have any suggestion for improvement? Do you 
do you think this can be improved in a different way so that also tells him tells you okay he is looking for something different in existing product so you write down that also right so all this tells you oh these are the customers requirements or these are the things which the customer does not like that should not be there and then you interpret okay what is the actual need the customer is talking about and this becomes all the needs of this particular customer so you have one like dislike form you will be getting at least 20 needs from a customer do this for 100 customers you will be getting 20 into 100 2000 customer needs you will be able to get that is the importance of having a, a questionnaire and asking questions for getting the customer needs so this is known as the like dislike method of customer need identification ok so this is the format question typical use customer statement likes dislikes suggested improvement so customer will be giving you all this information you can note down all the information so this is known as the raw information raw information that you get from the customer and then you interpret the need what the customer is asking for and then you can give the importance what is that is really needed or what is the customer says it's an optional one or it's really needed so this kind of information you will get from the customer okay so this is known as the like dislike method of data collection from customers so can you answer this question for this product now suppose i am doing a interview to redesign this product we can actually identify all the customer requirements by asking these questions what do you like in these products okay typical use you will be having okay cutting nails or polishing nail what are the likes you will be having for these products size okay small then lightweight okay lightweight what else easier to easy to carry yes anything else rust proof okay i'll write somewhere here rust proof pardon strong okay it is very strong so it is durable okay so these are the needs that the likes they have so basically it says that when they say he likes it because it's small so there is a need that it should be compact that is what the customer needs we can interpret lightweight okay basically lightweight only there is nothing which is direct easy to carry what is the need here when say easy to carry both of these right I mean it's, if it is compact and lightweight it should be easy to carry so you don't need to have a separate need for this because it says if it is compact and lightweight it will be easy to carry similarly dislikes what are the dislikes you have for this product we already talked about it okay Oh, okay so the uh, uh, straight uh, blade right straight blade is a problem there is no uh, stowage Wait, okay nail flying nail will fly away getting blunt okay oh, sorry. getting blunt Okay, so these are the things which you can say these are the dislikes now you interpret this when you say 
straight blades. So basically, people are saying that the blade should have the shape of the nail, or the nail, the the blade what is provided should have a capability to adapt to the nail shape. That is what you can actually adapt. adapt. So it's an adaptable geometry or shape, I can say. And nail flying away. Probably they are telling that there should be a mechanism to capture nail and blunt. So probably a way to sharpen once it is blunt. So these are the customers' requirement. Okay, my handwriting is not that good, but I am just explaining to you. So these are the needs that you can interpret from this, and then you can have many needs here. Similarly, suggested improvement, they will tell something and they will tell something here and then you interpret here as the needs. So, this way you will be able to get lot of needs identified in a like dislike method of customer interview. And like this, you will be having many customers. So, each customer will be giving you needs. Some of them may be same, overlapping needs will be there, but you need to collect it at least from 50, 60 people depending on the product and all these needs will form the basis for sorting the need and finding out the actual needs of the customer. So this is basically the like dislike method of data collection. Okay. So I have an exercise for you. Pardon? Oh yeah, important slide again, once you have this, you can write which one is most important, okay, very important, less important, like that you can write down and later on you can convert that into 1, 2, 3, etc. So here we should say, you know, optional, should be there, must be there, etc, etc. So what I will do, I will take an example in the next class and then tell you how to actually do this uh, exercise and find out the customer uh, like, dislike for an electric frying pan. Okay, meanwhile you can do a like dislike methods. So what do you like in this class? What do you like in this FCD, functional conceptual design or teaching? What do you dislike? What are your suggestions for improvements? Okay. So whoever gives the best, uh, okay, so if you are interested on, it's not a compulsory assignment. If you are I will be asking you to do this later, but uh, if you feel that it is important to give the like, dislikes, please feel free to give your likes, dislikes and your suggestion for this course. Okay, we will stop here.